Hi guys, I'm so excited to see everyone. We are here for Get Love Now. Welcome, Team Easy Daters. We've got one of the greatest people ever. We've got Antia Boyd, and I am so, so, so excited she's here because we do this Facebook group together, and she is literally the queen of networking in it. She knows everybody, she introduces you to everyone, and so that made me think like, all right, so she's the queen of networking, she must be pretty darn good at finding a guy. And I know that she's married to Broderick Boyd, so it must be a really interesting story. So, Antia, say hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Antia, I want to know the journey. Like, how did you get um, the guy? Yeah, totally. So everything started for me in Eastern Germany, Mike, where I grew up because a lot of people might think, where's this accent from? Okay. So um, I grew up in an emotionally absent household because my mom didn't know how to love either with words or with affection. And so what we little kids do is we say, okay, well, I don't deserve it. It must be about me. Right. So I said, okay, I make sure that I don't bother my mom, right? That I just make sure I become Miss Independent. And so what happened was I got split because part of me really wanted the love and the other part was making peace with that I would never get the love and I would never get the affection. So unfortunately, how that meant when I started dating that I attracted a lot of emotionally unavailable men because they're also split. There's a part of them that wants to love and another part that's, that's afraid of it, right? Um, and if you don't know what that means, that means you're being told you do always wanted, never expected miracle, right? And then the next day to, to be ghosted on, literally just like gone. And so that journey was, uh, was devastating. You know, it made me feel rejected, abandoned, and, and that there's something wrong with me. Because all my other girlfriends who just looked like me, there was nothing wrong with on the outside, so it seemed who were in happy relationships. So, so Mike, what I did was, I, I always tell my clients, you know, like you have to take massive action if you want to change your life. So I got myself from Germany um, into UC Berkeley. Okay, so there's a long step in between, which leads to like the connecting abilities that I have, okay? So it's definitely something, um, you know, I was always like used to, we moved every other year. So, and I studied personality psychology understanding attachment styles, right? And understanding why are some people totally okay saying I love you and being consistent with it and some other people just freaking out and totally backing off and some other people becoming really clingy and anxious, right? So it's really interesting. And on that journey, you know, not only did I do that, but I invested tens of thousands of dollars in other workshops, seminars. Look, I just wanted to understand what is going on. Why am I alone? Why are all those women alone, right? And how can I really help them to learn masculine and feminine dynamics? How to communicate with men, express my desires, but also honor and empower them so that they want to stay with me, you know? What's this me emasculating them? And so I led my own support groups, built my own network, and really helped most women to walk down the aisle, you know? I was the maid of honor. So everything seemed peachy and rosy, okay? And what happened was, me realizing that it wasn't happening for me. Yeah, I think that was like my deepest, darkest moment because here I am, I have all the tools, obviously I have a formula and a system that works, right? I mean, worked for women in their 20s and their 40s and their 50s, but it didn't work for me. And that's when I hired a one-on-one -on -one mentor for myself, which was like, oh, okay, I'm a mentor and here I am hiring my own mentor, right? And and who really helped me to be vulnerable without the fear of being betrayed and looking weak and to set boundaries without feeling guilty, right? Um, and becoming self-focused versus other focus. That was the biggest thing. And literally just a couple months later, Mike, you know, like I met my husband in Hawaii. So you see the backdrop here, right? As a nice reminder. And it's interesting because you would never think you meet the one in Hawaii, okay? And the first night that we met, he told me, that I'm the girl of his story. And that was pretty much that, you know, a year later we got married and, you know, we've been happily, happily married ever since and really have an open, authentic and transparent marriage. All right. So I'm a huge nerd when it comes to love stories. So like, 
Who went up to who? Like, what was said? I know, I know, story. I know. <laughs> so one thing I always tell my clients is like, when you hear, like, when you have this nudge, like, listen to it. So I was at the beach and I had this nudge to go to this meetup. Um, so drove down to, um, to uh, Honolulu um, and went to this meetup and I walked in and Brody walked in and I was just kind of like, okay, interesting. You know, we don't know why, so I don't, I'm not getting attached to any outcome here, right? We're all, you know, having fun. And literally, it was really interesting. We were bouncing off each other's, it was a discussion group. So we were bouncing off each other's you know, ideas. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. Very intellectually stimulating here. And then I strategically placed myself into his peripheral vision. So he can still be the masculine. Okay. I'm not going to approach him, but I'm also not going to be like so far away that he has to like cross the room and, you know, so just be open and inviting. Right. And literally that's when he just started talking to me and, um, but he wanted, he told me later, he would, he would have talked to me anyways. So that's why I always say, you can't miss your soulmate, even if you don't do that. So that was like a little bit lingering rest of my anxious patterns, you know, that I thought I have to do a little support and will help, you know? And, you know, what's interesting was, again, we found out we read the same books. We studied with the same mentors. Obviously we were physically attracted to each other. And he told me, he took me to the next meetup right there and then. I mean, it was nice because I hear so many women say, well, I met this guy, but he didn't ask me for my number. And all of that I said, well, he's not the right one. Because my man said right away, hey, I'm going to this next event. You want to go? And we went, you know, and then literally after that event, he told me, like, the moon was out. We were at the beach, you know. And then he told me, you're the girl of my story. As if it wasn't a big deal. Like, he wasn't, like, ecstatic about it. It was just like, okay, you're the girl of my story. Let's move on with life, you know. <laughs> Let's change the world. We have a huge responsibility to humanity. That's literally, by the way, what he said. And he never moved away from that. Wow. I Jeez. know, right? Those are some, like, big words out of this guy. I know. <laughs> Jeez, that's going to be, like, that's a tough act to, like, for – men to follow like for all our lady listeners they're like whoa that's serious right. so now they're all like unless my man says i'm the one he doesn't love me you know he's not serious and well i will have to tell you though that brody's done a lot of work on himself he was actually in maui first where he prepared for me spiritually like he really prepared for me and he worked through his own fears and his own issues around freedom and um, that he had his own story with his mom, right? Um, so, you know, it doesn't have to be that. Always what I tell women, just make sure that his actions match his words. So what I, I wasn't impressed by this because men tell me, told me all the time, like, you're the one and you're the miracle and whatever, whatever. And, but he followed up consistently with actions, right? And that was the difference. That, that was the difference than uh, compared to the other men. So no matter what the man says, just make sure how is he acting and how consistent is he with that action? Oh, I love that. All right, we got to go backwards because I need to understand this whole thing. Yes, yes. All right, so, <laughs> so you had a rough childhood and yeah. then you, you grew up, um, you moved to the US um, and then you started um, working in the field. You got a ton of people married and into relationships and you were kicking butt and you were like rock star everyone's falling in love around you, but you weren't, right. which is incredible why that didn't happen. And so then you went to a mentor, you got vulnerability and you got confidence and you set boundaries. But like, talk to me about, give me the specifics of how this translated to where you were in Hawaii and how you acted that just was like, you were ready. Yes. Oh, so much so. Okay. So one thing I talk about is the couple identity and individual identity. And so I was an anxious attachment style, right? So I was constantly living in future anticipation, constantly like, oh, I wonder how this last name looks behind my last name. Or, you know, like we women, we play all those crazy games. And, and I got to this point where I have to fill myself up, right? I will never forget this one day, Mike, where I was dating, it was seven years ago, and I was already working with my mentor and and what would happen was like a man would like criticize something on me and I would back off. I would actually not advocate for myself, but I would say, oh, I apologize that I have those needs. 
And so what I did was, you know, he said, oh, you kiss too much, right? You're too affectionate, which makes sense because my mom wasn't affectionate with me. So I craved that. And, but instead of backing off and saying, oh, I'm sorry or whatever, right? I said, well, that's me. That is seriously me. Like, I'm not going to, I, I can't change that, you know? And, and he literally changed around. He's like, oh, I, I wasn't that, that big of a deal. I was just, I just kind of mentioned it on the side. And so I realized, wow, I'm creating my man by my responses to his criticism or his little notion. It wasn't like an objection. It was just like, he just noted that, right? And so that uh, made me really stand up for myself and lean into my own quote unquote neediness, right? Because I had really this judgment around, don't show anyone that you're needy, don't show anyone you're anxious, and I would actually back off. So people would always think I'm avoidant, but I was actually anxious. So, which you think, oh, that's great, that's smart. No, that's not smart at all because you send all those mixed signals. And so that was the first step really, was, was really leaning in and really letting go of, you know what? If somebody says this is too much, it's too much. But I have to be congruent with myself, right? Like I can't betray myself any longer. Um, and the same with setting boundaries and saying no, what didn't work for me, right? Or how I did not want to be treated. And to actually let go of the sense of guilt afterwards that I was like, oh, you're so selfish or you don't know if this man would have been actually a really great fit for you, you know, or he just meant, because I would always give every man the benefit of a doubt in my anxious written mind right? Because that's what anxious attachment styles do. They give everybody the benefit of a doubt except themselves. So that was a little bit of my, my journey, right? It was really, and, and it was also about like letting go, like letting go of, okay, I let go of how this needs to happen because I always had this like miracle story and he will know right away and all of that. And I let that go. You know, I actually went to my, to Hawaii by myself. Like I just said, you know, it was funny. It was right after my friend's wedding. I was the maid of honor and I, get, I was just so frustrated, you know, and I just said, I just have to focus on myself. Obviously, dating, focusing on the other man and, you know, preparing for him doesn't help. And, and, and so I really let go and focus on what I desire, what I like to do and actually be selfish, really be selfish, right? And be, be vulnerable, be, lay it all out and say how I feel and not be afraid of that the other men will disappear. You know, so many women that I work with, they're afraid that, oh, I'm going to rock the boat and then he's going to disappear. I'm like, well, you haven't been married yet. If, if he's going to disappear every time when you rock the boat. <laughs> yeah. So that was the biggest piece for me was really like becoming in congruence with myself and also with my sexuality as well. All right. I got to weigh in with the male perspective here a little bit. Um, so congratulations. That's just amazing that you've um, transformed yourself. And uh, there's a lot of women out there that I think probably repress what's going on in their head and they just don't say what's on their mind because they think it's the man doesn't want to hear it. And you know, it's terrible because it's such an opportunity that you can actually make your relationship a million times better. And what I mean by that is when a woman, um, you know, first of all, gets things off of her chest or out of her brain and into her mouth and out there, like she could potentially feel better because she's, you know, releasing that and relieving that stress. But at the same time, if she does it effectively, it's an opportunity to make her man feel needed. And yeah. then once the man feels needed, she can appreciate him. And a man, revolve, his whole relationship is like, I want my woman to feel happy and I want her to feel amazing. And she feels happy when she gets to vent a little bit. And then when she gets to vent, she can be like, Mike, thank you so much for listening to me. You're so fantastic. And then I go, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty good. <laughs> it's great. And so I love that. I'm glad you got there. And now I'm sure um, your husband loves it because he's like, yeah, I'm doing a good job. He, he's amazing, really. And, you know, we always do like we did a shadow ceremony the night before our wedding where because we were doing such a good job, I was like, let's take it a step further. Let's actually acknowledge all the fears and all the judgments that we don't even want the other person. So let's be proactive, right? Instead of being reactive and wait until it comes up, like to just say, look, I have this fear of that I lose my freedom. That was Brody, right? Um, because he was in a recovered avoidant attachment style. I had my fear of like not being good enough. 
for him because he's so perfect, right? Um, he has the looks, he has all his ma masculine archetypes balance. I mean, it's like every woman always tells me, I need a Brody, right? So, and it was really huge for us to acknowledge that also in our actual ceremony, right? So, um, so that you can actually experience the joy, right? Because, you know, Brene Brown talks about there's no thing as selective dimming, emotional dimming, meaning you can't just say, oh, I dim my anger, but expect to have this like passionate, ecstatic, you know, authentic relationship, right? It doesn't work that way. You know, you got to express every emotion, you know, sadness, grief, anger, rage, and trust me, I have plenty of it. You can ask my husband, you know, I'm definitely not, not an innocent little angel. Um, but it's about like, what do you do with that? Right? Like really training a partner to be, I'm not targeting at you. Like, but if you can hold the space for me and so I can move through it. So then I can communicate what was coming up for me. What was I actually projecting or what was, was I triggered by? Because I was judging that inside of myself. So maybe I was judging that I can be selfish inside of myself. So I got fed up with this selfishness so that he didn't ask me if I want the last piece of chocolate, right? We always fight over the chocolate. So one thing you need to know about the boy's household. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. It's, it's all about being willing to go there into the places that feel really uncomfortable and feel really vulnerable, right? And it doesn't have to be the, the weak, quote unquote, sad pieces or the, um, the insecure pieces. It can also be the anger and the rage that we're afraid drives the other person away. Mm. Awesome. All right, Antia, we got to change topics. I want to get into it now. All right, um, let's do it. <laughs> we're doing it. Um, what we're not are in it already. <laughs> what? We're not in it already. <laughs> oh, no. We're getting into it right now. All right. What do you see as the biggest challenge um, for women finding men? Okay. So here it is. Ready? So, so number one is like the unwillingness to be wrong and the unwillingness to let go of control. 100% hands down. I just had a group coaching call with my clients yesterday because it has served them so much. So the successful women that I work with, they're like CEOs have their own companies whatever, whatever, they're like, well, it has always served me, right? But I'm like, yeah, but it's not serving you in relationships because you're not creating polarity. See, this is what happens. They say, well, why can't I be my masculine? And the man is just going to be even more masculine. I'm like, because we live in a universe of duality, you're not polarity. It doesn't work that way. He's going to run the opposite direction. And you know that, Mike, yourself, you're a man, right? You, you're like, why am I here? She's got it all figured out. She carries her own groceries. She makes her own plans. What do you feel needed for? Right? I always say that. Yeah, if I don't feel needed, I need to go find someone who makes me feel needed. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta, be, you gotta feel needed. Absolutely. Right, and 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 along with that goes the um, wanting to be, not wanting to be wrong. Like one key question I always ask a woman before I take her on as a client is, are you willing to be wrong? Because if you're not you're not coachable because, you know, we're such great advocates, right? We're so great to make a case why something doesn't work, but are you willing to make a case for the opposite, right? Are you willing to advocate why you could be wrong or you could be, let's be more curious versus judging things right away, right? So that's definitely a big thing. And the biggest thing for me is really that the women don't trust their own power. Like what I said before, they actually resist their anger, their rage. Why? Because they have dated men because they're so masculine so that attract the overly feminine men who can't hold that space, right? They're like, oh, wow, it's like way too much, girlfriend. You know, you can't explode like a volcano here. Like literally, I had like one woman tell, tell you know, her, her partner was saying, you can't do this, right? And so like when we get that message that like, oh, you know, not only can he not hold us, but he actually stops us from doing it. Like we, we stop, we, again, we dim who we really are, right? Like our purpose, our passion and all of our emotions. So become, become more and more inauthentic and playing and turning us into a pretzel versus being all of who we are. So that's interesting. I want you to like try to define that for us because like, I'm really excited now. Okay, great. This was like some of the best advice I've heard in a while. So I love it. All right. 
So when you say like, so a woman is, is, is dim when she can't fully explain herself and when a guy like shuts it down. So yeah. if that's happening in a relationship, like one, what do you do to fix it? Or two, um, like when do you walk away from it? Or so talk us through that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so the biggest piece is really like the communication piece for sure, right? Because there's two pieces. There's number one, there's this uh, opportunity where Brody and I, we had an argument like years ago, I remember, and I wanted to run because in the beginning stages, you just want to run. You just, I want to get out of here. But what I did, Mike, I literally walked towards him, like literally, not just saying that energetically, slowly. And I'm like, in my brain was saying, what the heck are you doing? You're supposed to run, you know? And it didn't mean that I apologized to anything, but I felt like, okay, I need to move towards him and be like my body next to his body, right? And just embrace him and really feel what is really my emotion. Because remember, for me, it wasn't no longer about wanting to be right, but really wanting to be authentic, really wanting to be right. Like, what's the truth here? That's a good question for you to ask yourself. What's the truth here? And what oftentimes happened is I started to cry because I felt unsafe or I felt like I was about to shut my heart off, right? So it can look like this. And another way how it can look like is that the woman actually doesn't expect her man to do that right away, but, but says, excuse me, you know, I need to go into the bedroom and scream into the pillow. And it happens sometimes that we pull over somewhere and I open the door and we're somewhere in the woods and I just scream. I throw a temper tantrum, you know, like a two year old, right? Like we're frozen, ah! right? So that's what I do. And just 30 seconds, a minute, and then come back out and then we can talk. Okay, like what's coming up for you, right? So for her, I would definitely say, don't put the responsibility on your partner. The first step is to take the responsibility for your emotions for yourself, right? And don't make him wrong for not being able to hold it because if you make yourself wrong for your emotions and your rage and your rage monster or your anger, then you can't expect him to make you right for it, right? So first of all, you have to heal your own relationship with your anger. And then once you love your anger, which I started to do, right, then my husband was like able to hold space and be there for me and just we started taking workshops together, right? And he was moving energy. See, that's the other thing too, where women really don't allow men to show up. I feel like you men have already this innate abilities. And if we women create that space for you to show up, you actually do. But what we have to do is like really stop resisting and really start surrendering. And I was amazed what came out of my man, how much he was moving the energy and he was not even impressed at all. And because I was... I felt safe, you know, in my emotions. So that's what I would say. So always tell what I tell my women is like, you're not responsible for your partner's emotions. You're responsible for your own emotions, but you are responsible for the space you create for your partner, the space you create for your date. That's you are responsible for. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I, you lost me on a one piece. Like, so how okay. does the woman, how does the woman create the space? Yeah, so, so I'll give you an example. A friend of mine just went on a date a couple of days ago because stories always work the best, right? And so how she created the space, she just said, look, I just want to be upfront with you, right? You know, I don't know you so well yet. And we just went on one date and I'm seeing some other men as well. So she set the stage by being transparent. Now, interestingly, what happened is he actually told her that he's com a complete avoidant. And he was completely honest. Well, that's all you can ask for of a man, okay? So he can only be honest. He can only tell you where he is. But she set the stage again with her vulnerability, right? She went first. She shared first. I did the same thing with my shadow. I told Brody first what I was afraid of, right? And then he showed up. So that's how a woman sets the stage. She really is in the feminine versus like saying, you should do this or that. She really shares with no attachment to just say, look, this is where I'm at, right? And not like saying, I expect you to fix it. And I know you guys, you always want to fix everything, right? It's like, you don't have to fix it. I just want you to let you know where I am. And then just, just be quiet because the anxious attachment style always wants to fill in the blanks and just see what he has to say. And you would be amazed what comes out of the man's mouth and what he feels safe now to share because 
you know, one thing that I learned is that the more emotional I am, the more he can live, express himself through me. Because if I need to express my emotions first so he can feel his own emotions. Mm. So let me ask you this. So we've got Brody, who's an avoidant guy, which is like, so if people don't understand the attachment styles, we've got avoidant and ancients. And avoidant is someone who's going to like stay away and like your typical quote unquote like player that like, mm-hmm. you know, it's just is always like, Type exactly right? multiple women um you know i can't get tied down and then anxious is like oh my god are you in love with me are you in a relationship like anxious trying to hold on exactly um, and that was very over generalizing by the way but um yes. for this we'll use it um so when brody like and you guys are married and you're together and he gets to his avoidance state where he's like i need to get away like how do you let that happen what do you do I love that you asked this question. So number one, he's really like a recovered. So he has a little bit of a residual, which I'm aware of, but I have that inside of me too. Um, Is we actually have a structure in our entire marriage, right? So we have already days and hours that are built in where he has, where he can fill up his magician or where he can fill up his different masculine archetypes, right? We talk about that. Um, So that's filled in. I mean, I sent him away. He went to David Data last year to to the East Coast, was gone for a few days, right? So we always make sure, again, the individual identity and the couple identity, right? That they're always balanced. Because for me, it's no longer about, because I feel it sometimes. I mean, sometimes I walk into Brody's office three times a day, right? And I feel like, oh, okay, I'm a little, it's a little anxious here that kicks in. What's, go, what's coming up, right? What's the emotion that I need to work through? or call a girlfriend, or go on a run, right? So again, I'm taking responsible for my own emotions, but he's also there for me. I mean, he is also like, because I give him all the space, <laughs> right? And not, here's another thing too for the anxious, okay? Very important. If you attract, like, you know, when my man needs space, usually that means also that I need space, just in a different way that I wasn't even aware of, right? I need some space to heal myself or well, I need some space to, to bring my energy back to myself because if that bothers me, then I was clearly too other focused versus bringing the energy back to myself. Right? So we're really talking about moving from codependence to interdependence, right? Always coming back with a full glass versus, versus an empty glass and saying, here, you fill it up. Right? So that's really like the biggest work that we do now is, is really creating the structure. Again, the, we're all about being proactive. We don't want to wait until something comes up. And I also speak to whatever comes up for him. Like I, I can feel it anyways. I'm like, I feel like today is, yesterday he was gone a whole day in nature because that's why he gets his downloads. And that goes back to Mike to, um, because the anxious can be very like self-focused when it comes to the needs. I need you to be here, Right. And actually the work for me was to, when you really love someone, you look out for them, for their best good. You're their friend, right? You're not just their lover. And their friend tells you, okay, you know what? I feel like today is a day for you to just go to the zoo and watch the baby orangutan because he loves the baby orangutan, okay? I don't know why, okay? But he loves the baby orangutan in the zoo. So I'm like, go to the zoo, I'll see you tonight. And, and he comes back and is all happy and is all turned on and, then, you know, ready to give. Wow. That was awesome. What a great answer. I love that. All right. Let's go back to vulnerability um, just for a second here. So why is vulnerability so powerful in attraction, love, and dating? Okay. So one thing that Brody always tells me is that a woman who is the most vulnerable is the most magnetic, right? It's like really, it, the man is like the most turned on sexually when she's vulnerable because number one, protector instinct. So we have the whole evolutionary, of course, right? But also because it, there's, there's this real authenticity, there's growth, right? So when I'm vulnerable, because when I'm vulnerable, sometimes I don't even know why I'm vulnerable. Like I just, you know, I feel like insecure. Oh, Why am I feeling insecure right now? So we become curious together. And again, it's this honesty, right? And that's such a turn on because it creates intimacy. You know, it's it's like trusting the other person. 
And for men, the biggest thing, and you, you notice too, Mike, is it's really all about like, you know, that's what I hear men say all the time. Just protect my heart and I'll give you the kingdom. I'll do everything for you if you protect my heart. So when I'm vulnerable, like that's, that's how he's, how his heart is protected. And it allows him to be vulnerable as well and to be the most authentic, right? Versus the other way around where we're just pretending or we just, you know, you know, you maybe you push your man into two or three archetypes. You only have to be the protector and the knight, but you can't be in your inner boy. You can't play. You can't be sad. You can't be insecure because I'm already insecure. So you need all the space for me, right? So that doesn't work because then men go into depression or they go into, you know, some addiction. And that's what we really see over and over again. So Again, ladies, you know, that's, that's the work, right? It's to really, that's what it really means to love a man is to be vulnerable and to be also be vulnerable and say, like what I said, when I walked towards my husband, where I could have like punished him. See, that's another piece too. Being vulnerable is refrain from guilt trips, from wanting to manipulate your man. And that goes also in dating. It also goes in just being on dates. You know, because we women have so much sexual power, right? So it's easy to manipulate a man, refrain from that, and refrain, refrain from punishment. Never, ever punish a man. Never, right? Um, because you only punish yourself. You only cut your heart off. You're, you know, you cut, cut, you cut off your heart. That's what I want to say. <laughs> But yeah, that's, that's the biggest piece. And that's actually the most vulnerable to not punish, right? To not guilt trip, to be like, well, then what other weapons do you have? You don't. All you have is honesty and vulnerability and presence and speaking to what is. Well, speaking from, um, from the male perspective, women definitely have words of appreciation and appreciation as a weapon. Like if you want me to wash the, the dishes. Positive, of course, yeah, the positive, yes. <laughs> absolutely, the positive. Like, you want me to wash the dishes, all you have to do is say, you will make me the happiest woman in the world if yeah. you were to wash the dishes right now. And you better believe I'm going to be right over there washing the dishes, and then I'm going to be looking at her when I'm done, and I'm like, where's my compliment? Give me my compliment. I want it. And she's right. like, you're amazing, and give me a kiss. I'm like, worth it. Did it. Right? It's like, you're my dishwasher hero. You know? <laughs> and I will keep washing, and I'll be like, yes, this is awesome. <laughs> All right, but we need to talk about some different guys now. We need to talk about the guys that can take advantage. So women need to be prepared so that this doesn't happen because we got, our women are talking about being vulnerable. Now we need to talk about women setting boundaries so men can't take advantage. So talk yeah. to me, I want to learn from you and you're going to crush this, I can't wait. How do you set boundaries in a sexy, like wonderful way so that men love it you get what you need and they're excited about following the boundaries. Ah, oh, so good, right? So, so here's the mindset you want to come from. The mindset you want to come from, he wasn't even aware of it. So let's say he didn't ask you if you want another glass of wine. Or I don't know, you know, you're out in a restaurant. Maybe he ordered another one for himself, but not for you. So first off, assume that he was like single focused. He has so much on his mind, right? And it's not necessary that he's selfish. And, and to really speak to that and, and just say, look, I just really acknowledge, you know, I love our dinner tonight. So find something authentic. So don't fake it. Don't take my words. So find something that you can really feel authentically connected to. And you really feel this deep, warm feeling in your heart, you know, and just, just really enjoy this juicy, delicious. If you can, if you can acknowledge him about his masculinity, even better, even better. And then, and then you say, look, I really appreciate, you know, when you order, a glass of wine like you know to check in with me if I want another or to check to just be aware so maybe you see like okay what is it about so maybe it's awareness so like I, I, I love when a man is aware you know so for example like when my glass of wine is empty like if do I want another glass of wine right um, or you know if my whatever it is right so and, and then just that that would make me really happy I just feel really like seen when you do this right because I know that you care because men want to know, want a woman to know that they care, if they care about her, right? And then again, in the end, 
say, you know, I, I, I know that you want to make me happy or I know that, you know, you're a wonderful host or whatever the case may be, right? So that's a positive example. Now we talk about, <coughs> so let's say it did work out with the guy, okay? And you don't want to drag him along. You don't, you hope he doesn't call you, okay? You just want to say, you know, you're not really the right match, basically, right? To just say, to just say that, you know, to just say that I enjoyed my night with you and, you know, I don't feel that connection. You know, and I just want to be really honest with you because you deserve honesty because you're a man of integrity and I want to treat you as such, right? So very sexy because, the, you know, the best quote unquote projections, which I don't really believe anyways, are the ones where the man is not sure, wait, was that a compliment or was that a rejection, right? So you always want to see how can I marry this compliment together with uh, just, and by the way, it's not a rejection. It's just, you know, somebody acknowledged first that they're not a match he would have found that out down the line anyways too, that they're not a match, right? So that's what I would tell the women and to do it right away because other, if you don't do it, the guilt comes in and then you don't do it and then you drag it along and then it gets worse, right? And that's when you get the creepy text messages that never go away and it's annoying. <laughs> Right, because then the guys are like, well, you went on all those dates with me or you did this or that, right? So again, it's like from the get-go, just be on from the get-go. And honestly, when I did this with Brody, he said, wow, I love this. I know where I stand with you. I have, I've never wonder, you know, there's never like a question mark because men don't want to wonder and also just see it as how would you like to be treated? Just treat him exactly how you want to treat it. And what happened, Mike, when I started doing that, I attracted loving quote unquote rejections from men as well, who were just so kind and told me right away after a date or after whatever it was that they don't feel that they don't want something long term or whatever it was. Because the first step might not be you attracting the right one right away. The first step might be you attracting honesty from men right away versus the bad guys you talk to, quote unquote, bad guys, right? Which is really insecure, basically, and not able to speak their truth. Um, but, you know, you attract, you attract a straightforward man. Hmm. I love that. That is good advice. I like it. All right. And Tia, I want you to leave us uh, with one thing. I'm not going to ask you a question. I just want you to tell us, like, your number one best piece of advice for the ladies. What do you got for us? Ah, oh, okay. So the number, the best, the best advice I have is like, when you go into your emotions, like see what's the real emotion. So when I went into my anger, I actually found out later, oh, actually it's panic. Actually, it's when I go into anxiety. But what happens is I, I want to flip myself into power because the ego likes to think I'm in power, I'm in charge, I'm in control, right? So it feels too vulnerable to not to feel helpless or to feel insecure, right? So again, to look underneath, like what's really there? What's, what's the true raw emotion, right? Because what happens so often, I see this all the time with my clarity calls, Mike, is like we're going into this vulnerable piece. And what women do is, is instead of, they say something vulnerable or sad, somebody died or something happened, and then they laugh afterwards so what i tell those women is instead of saying that just say that you felt sad and just take a breath <sighs> when you want to laugh and just be with that don't run away from that you know don't make fun of it people can tell anyways that, that it's safe to be you to be your vulnerable self it sure is it's definitely it's so beautiful when you have a woman that is just acting like herself and just so authentic. Like you just, oh, as a man, it's just like, I'm so attracted to you. That's wonderful. Like right? just being you. Like I love it because like you always on dates, like we sit next to women and they're like trying to put on this show and you're like, this isn't confident. This isn't sexy. This isn't attractive. Like just right? be yourself. And if it happens that like we mesh, this is going to be amazing. And if we don't mesh, that's fine. We'll, you know, we'll find different people for each other. But just be you. and It's so sexy. So sexy. Absolutely right. One thing that my husband always says real quick is like he says he's like the swimming pool and I'm the water. So the more I splash around and I'm like my authentic self and in my emotions, the more he can feel me because the, 
water splashes against the walls of the swimming pool. So that might help the women too, you know, to think about it in this way. Well, I like that. Go Brody. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> it sounds it. Maybe we need to get him on here too. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> all right, well, we should have got you at the same time, but anyway, all right, I digress. Antia, this has been phenomenal. I learned so much from you. I think everyone did. Um, we, I know you're giving away a free gift, and so everyone, I'm gonna put the free gift down here, and it's gonna be amazing. Definitely take advantage. Antia, tell everyone what your free gift is. Yeah, so it, it's a 60 minute uh, find the right man clarity call with me where we go clear and uh, getting crystal clear on what are the boundaries, what are, what are your boundaries that you're not honoring, what are your challenges and your blocks. And, and are you, wait, wait, are you insane? You're giving away an hour free? Yes. Oh my God. But you have to take out, you have to fill out the intake form. So you have to show me that you have some skin in the game, okay? Uh, so you gotta, you gotta lay it out there too. So you gotta meet me halfway, okay? So but if you fill out the intake form, you will get that, that call for absolutely complimentary. Because I see that you're, if you're willing to fill it out, lay your emotions on the line, and be transparent and authentic with me, like I'll meet you there, 100%. Wow. And Tia, that's insane. That is a lot of your time for free. You. That is amazing. Like that, I don't want to quote myself too early, but that might be the like most generous free gift I've ever heard of. So if wow. anyone enjoyed the interview and made it to this long, which I'm sure a lot of you did, you need to take advantage of that. That thing's amazing. That's yeah. incredible. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, women have like breakthroughs right there on the call, right? Because we're really laying out the structure and I pick up subconsciously already what's going on because the women show me like one one face, then I actually figure out what's, what's going on underneath that they're not aware of because it's blind spots. So they don't know what it is, right? I wasn't aware that I wasn't vulnerable. I thought I was vulnerable the whole time. And I wasn't at all, right? So I'm like, wow, okay. So it's really all about having that step-by-step -step system. So at the end, you, you have a system that you know who you are, you know, to set the boundaries, to be vulnerable, and to truly trust yourself. And what I told you before, Mike, to trust your power. Trust your power so you don't abuse it against the man, <laughs> what you've done in the past. Absolutely. All right, Antia, thank you so much for being here. This was amazing. Um, and everybody else, we will see you next time. This was awesome. Awesome, take care. Bye-bye.